Let's hear you people! Let's hear you people!
Check, check. and the boys were brilliant. My mate Mike, Nick Marino, fantastic. What a great band. Jason, front line, how about... Oh! <laughs> 
Six weeks we had rehearsals in the Channel Islands, a place called Jersey. Not New Jersey, nah, not that one. Right? As I said, when I joined the band, all we did was drink, drink, eat. We had a private chef come in over from France. And uh, for the first two days, I was nicknameless, right? Nicknamed, you know, somebody can see Monica, Swifty Morgan, or, you know, Shooter McGavin. I was given the name Boomer. Absolutely nothing to do with drumming. So anyway, I got me Monica. Everybody thinks it's because I used to play very hard and very loud in one of the top best heavy metal bands in the wild, wild world, yes. Anyway, so we get over to the Bahamas, Compass Point. We're recording the first couple of three songs. In between re recording writing what's going on for the rest of the record. So Adrian and Bruce came up with a song called Flight of Igorous. Big bone of contention that was, because me and Harry wanted to play it really quick. Like I'm gonna play it a night for you lot. Bruce and Adrian went, now it's got the da da Oh, yeah, fuck. <laughs> yeah, okay. There's always one, isn't there? I've got a swear box around the bottom. I just, everyone else has been putting $100 in it. $10 for me tonight, because I'm owning the place with Mitch. We'll split it, $5 each, Mitch. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to swear on this. Anyway, so, Ari, in his infinite wisdom, yet again, it'll be the first single off the record. Oh, will it? 
Yeah. You're going to star in it, Nick. I went, eh? I said, just because I'm the good-looking bloke in the band, don't mean to say I, I don't want to take the limelight from you lot. No, 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 you're the new boy. Just because you're good-looking, don't worry about it. We're going to put blue face makeup on you. Are you, you what? Yeah, we're going to put face makeup and you've got to spit, spit, spit me jam out your chops. You're the evil dad. What evil dad? Don't worry about it, you're in the movie or the film. So we go out one afternoon. And they plaster me in this blue gunge. You girls know what it's all about, don't you? You do that all the time. They're crying out. I'm on you, I had the whole face down. And neck and ears. They put a cape on me and sent me out to stand on the edge of this bloody precipice overlooking the bloody ocean. And it's a blind of Gal Falls 20. You have a look at it, the skirt's blowing out, you see me drawers and everything. <laughs> So I'm out there, and the camera blow, it's Jim Ukich or someone produced it, and he goes, right, Nick, get as close to the edge as you can. I said, hey, mate, I've only been in the band two months. Piss off. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere near the front of that. He said, well, let's get the camera. I said, you move the camera somewhere safe, and it makes it look like I'm on the precipice. But in fact, I was from here back to here, you know, a good five or six feet. So that's it. I survived. And I knew there was a conspiracy, because I found out the management took out a massive life policy on me when I joined the band. And the rest of them. They must have known something. What do you mean? So that's my story of Flight of Vegas. Then they put me in the control room, yeah? I might have to do this. Here's the control panel. I couldn't move. I said, don't move. How am I going to get up there? And then they did something on the eyeball. Anyway, we're going to do this song for you. I bored you all asleep now, we'll have to wake you up again, won't we?
you guys who support Iron Maiden, music fan lovers, we all love all kinds of different music, but you guys, without a doubt, and then you hear a lot of bands say, oh man, we've got the best fans in the world, man. BS. Iron Maiden have got the best fans in the world. In the world. Without a doubt. And I'm not saying that to placate or to win people over. I don't have to, because you love Iron Maiden, as much as we love Iron Maiden. Thank you so much. So thank you so much. Uh, it takes a lot of people behind the background, or in the background, that work the system for Maiden. We're down to our road crew, our sound and lights, our management, our production people that put all the people on the guest list, make sure nothing goes wrong, which is very hard to do when you get a lot of folks coming and want to see you and you want to take care of them. Down to the runners that go and get the tea, the tea bags, the sugar for everything, for the dressing rooms. We're not fussy bunch, we have one cold chicken. That's from our dear friend. Where are you? Peter Lokrant, you in the audience, where are you, son? Come over here, son, where are you? Come here, son. You cloth ears, isn't you? Ladies and gentlemen, very dear friend and brother, Peter Lokrant, works for the Iron Man since 1985. I am, I have, and I love it. Dad, you can give me that fifty dollars you've owed me for the last twenty years. <laughs> Peter, I met Peter first of all. We used to play a lot of football in in, in, in the non Queen's English to you flipping lot. That's uh, soccer. You lobotomised the British language. Drop the eye out of alumi, alumi. Uh, what do you call it? Aluminium. It's aluminium. There's an extra eye in there. <laughs> I don't know, that's that commercial on the telly when the, the, the uh, old McDonald goes, and they say, how do you spell cow? And he goes, C-O-W-E-I-O. -E -I -E -I uh, I love that. It's classic, classic. Isn't it? <laughs> brilliant. Whoever came up with that one for a, a commercial on the telly, that's brilliant. Where was I? So, Peter. What? Uh, Still only 50 bucks. It's going up five and five. If you don't pay me, you're... Oh! Swear box, $100. Mitch was going to spot me then. All right. He's going to put it in the box as well for you, is he? <laughs> Get that one, boys and girls. Think about it. Right. So, we were playing soccer against uh, Richie Blackmore and Rainbow. Right, and Richie Blackmore was a goal hanger. And I was the goalie of the band. I was a good goalie. I played on a school team and everything. I was pretty good. We were up 3-0, right, before the second half. So there I am, Blackmore, goal hanger. He played in the backfield, right? Well, actually, front field for them, because he, he was up the front forward, because he was, like, 25 feet from the goal, you know, and the, the penalty box. So I'm going, oi, Richie! Yes, Nick? Get your ass in the game, mate. I said, you're just waiting for the ball to be fed to you. You're not going to get past me. He tried, and he got so angry. So what he did was, he said, he said, uh, I think it's Frank or Fred, his, his henchman, he, was, he looked after Richie on the road. So what he did was, this guy, he kicked the ball, and I rolled over, cradling the ball with my back downfield, looking at my own goal. This geezer comes over and knees me in the back. I mean, he knocked all the wind out of me, I'm going, <laughs> I won't do it, girls, but it basically rhymes, it doesn't rhyme with crown, but that's what the crown is. So I'm trying to get an expletive, serious word out, to, to, and I'd split, basically, a split a vertebra and I'd trap nerve, right? So we were in Copenhagen, we go to Stockholm, this guy was working for our promoter, a guy called Thomas Johansson. Thomas Johansson's been our promoter in, in Sweden, Emma, E-M-M-A, isn't it? Em, Emma Tala, Emma Tala's Telstar. Live Nation, who gives a, you know... Anyway, he's been our promoter forever and a day, so he's, he's working on him because he's a masseuse. Masseuse? A masseuse? You're a masseuse? No, I'm a masseur. A masseur? I stand up when I do You're not a sir, son. I've known you 30 years. I'll see you sit down and take a leap many a time. Right, so he gets him in and he works on my back. I was in agony when I played. I mean, so was I. Oh, please. So he works on me back, and I go back, and I go out in the show, I play about half an hour, and then I could turn the left side of my kick, because I couldn't play the left side. So we get over to the stage, and I, I, I'm, I said to Steve Harris and the boys, I said, guys, 
we got to get this man out on the road with us. And he went, oh, is he that good then? And I said, yeah. He says, he's a geezer. I said, no, no. He said, don't we want a bird? Richard III. I said, well, that would be nice. I said, but he really worked on my, and I, I mean, it's, it's getting better. And he worked on me for, yeah, we did two, two days, right. So he came out, and uh, so I said to Stephen and the guys, we could use him as a soccer team physio. And he's a big bloke, and he's a bully. So we need someone like that. <laughs> we need someone for the security, for the band. So he got the job, and he's been with us ever since. Be the love crowd, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me, I, think, I, I came down here on a completely different mission. No, not the mission for Mary. That was a cracker. You boys and girls have heard that. I know what the crown is. He's not the... You know what I mean. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I played with... He never gets any better looking. I was still the best looking bloke in his band, with Pat Travers, in 1976. We did two absolutely furious albums. They were because the drummer was on boom, on fire. <laughs> Do you remember the time when I fell off the back at the top of that, uh, we were going to the pub and I fell off the back of the, you know, the, the chicken wire fence because I wanted to get in the pub before everybody else because I needed a pint before they got there so I could buy my own and not have to buy them a drink. So I scarped over the fence and I, f I fell over, I fell off it and I sprained my right ankle, didn't I? Come on, I can't <laughs> We were at Essex Studios, where, where Queen did Bo Rap. Remember, they were in the room, room next door. But you still be open. We could hear this going, what the heck's going on here? This is just fantasy. <laughs> Remember all that? No. You are freaking joking, aren't you? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Peter Miles Cowling, my dear friend, on bass. Give it up. Yeah. 